This is XP TV Sports, and you're watching live amateur mixed martial arts. We're here at the Battle of Tampa Bay at the IMAX channel side, and as you can see, we're at the back of the line. You can't even see the front door. It's so packed. Everybody's ready to get in and watch some fights. A different setting for an MMA fight. Intimate. Only 400 seats in the whole place. We're trying something completely different. Something else that's different tonight. Amateur fights. There'll be 11 fights in the cage right behind me. Three three-minute rounds. These kids really want to prove themselves. This is how they're starting their whole MMA career. They're going to be fighting their hearts out right inside this cage behind me. And who's going to be calling the action? My old buddy Benjamin Glossop. If you want to be a professional MMA fighter, first you have to pay your dues. And tonight at the Channel Side IMAX in beautiful Tampa, Florida, we're bringing you some of the most electric amateur MMA action this city has ever seen. Hello everybody, I'm Benjamin Glossop alongside Valerie Thompson, and this is the Battle of Tampa. The state of Florida requires five amateur fights before a fighter can turn pro, and Valerie, these fighters are here to get after it. That's right. If you ever wonder where do these fighters come from when you're watching the pros on TV, this is it. We have people debuting tonight, we have others right on the cusp of becoming pro. It's going to be an exciting night with some exciting fights. Whatever their ambition is, whether it's to be in strike force, whether it's to get to the UFC, their dreams are getting tested tonight. Stay tuned, the action comes up right after this. Going for it, his eyes are bulging, he's bleeding from the head, and he gets it at 788. Are you kidding? More MMA action coming right up. This is XP TV Sports, and you're watching live amateur mixed martial arts. I'm here with Delaney Owen, and she is 3 and 0. What's your fighting style? Um, I'm definitely a jiu-jitsu girl. I like wrestling, too. Um, I'm kind of trying to adapt my game, though, and do a little bit more stand-up, too. So, How long you been training? Uh, about a year and a half. And how long you been fighting? Since May. What are you looking forward to most tonight? Uh, I just want it to be a good fight. You know, I hope the, the crowd is you know, excited and everything, and I just want to put on a good show. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. All right, we're here with Nicole Verone. Verone, how long have you been fighting for? Uh, about eight months. Eight months. Are you excited for tonight? Yes, always. What is your signature move? Knees. I'm in the knees. She's into the knees. All righty, time for our next fight is a female fight between Delaney Owens and Nicole Verone. Owens in the camos, Verone in the black board shorts. You can see the big height advantage for Verone. Owens also uh, with the undefeated record 3-0, shoots the single right off the bat, Ben. Man, I tell you what, Owens is crazy aggressive. I, I've seen her in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu grappling tournaments. Very, very aggressive. She's showing that same mentality here in her MMA career. Look at that nice double leg dump going straight to side controls. Absolutely technical and just, I mean, that's something your coach is proud of instantly. Yeah, Delaney Owens known for controlling her opponent. She's very, very tough at this weight, very strong, and she really is coachable. Has a great jits game. Uh, she's beaten uh, Annalisa Smith in War II. She did that back in August, and uh, before that she had beaten uh, Paxton Nettles. Doing a good job out there already on Verone with full mount now. Full mount position, great transitions, but what's funny to me, and I completely just respect this type of mentality, Verone, trying to get her to do an interview pre-fight, she, she barely wanted to say three words. <laughs> Super shy, very relaxed, but you look at her right here from this crazy unorthodox angle, she's throwing rib kicks, She's telling the referee, Ross Kellen, hey, I'm all right. I'm not in any danger. She is about as calm as a person can be calm for standing there and getting in a fight with somebody. Yeah, and like you say, she's tall and lanky. She, too, is coachable. And she's got a good ground game as well. And as you see her now falling into the uh, closed now guard of Owens. This is the classic matchup of the attacker versus the defender. You can tell that Delaney Owens wants to attack and put the pressure and catch, catch that submission from any angle she can get it. Whereas Nicole Verone is the laid back, very chill. Look at that armbar setup. Oh, that's beautiful. But she's, she's going for it. She is, but look what I'm talking about. Look how 
calm that Verone was just stepped over immediately. She's going to escape from this. Yeah, and that's you said the key word in that, Ben. She's calm, and that's the key out there. It's amazing that she's an amateur because she's showing a lot of poise. She's not panicking. She's not gassing out, and she gets out. She realized, and, and Owens realized that, you know what, I got nothing here. Yeah, that, that dramatic step over that Verone did is how you can tell she was going to escape that armbar. If you know the ground game well enough, you know that she stepped over hard enough to get the elbow, the elbow below the fulcrum, and it wasn't going to have the type of pressure that needs you to, to tap out. Owens did a great job maintaining the armbar to see if she can sink it in a little tighter from the position. <laughs> Man, that's an incredible job on both of their parts. You know, I think the guys could learn a lot from, from the women in, in the sport. And you watch the female fighters, they look to their corners consistently. They're looking for the coaching. They're realizing that the coaches can see things you can't see in there. And she, you can see Carone looking to her corner constantly to say, what should I do next? That doesn't mean she doesn't, she's not confident in her game. It just means she's coachable. A great athlete is a coachable athlete to their coach. And that was a pretty slick first round. When we come back, round two. All right, time for round two. Jay Adams alongside Ben Glossop. Glad you joined us. It's Battle of Tampa from the IMAX in Channelside. What a beautiful venue to have a fight. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Right now you're watching a great matchup between Nicole Verone and Delaney Owens. I had to give that first round to Owens. Absolutely. She was more aggressive. She secured the takedowns. Uh, nothing to take away from Verone. She played a very smart defensive game. But in the world of mixed martial arts, You've got to attack and you've got to apply the pressure and the person that's doing the most pressuring is usually the person that will win the rounds. Nicole Verone walks into this fight with a couple of wins under her belt. She beat Janelle Van Booskirk uh, way back in October of 11 and Devaney Clayton in June of this year. So she comes in with some confidence riding on a two fight win streak. I want to go back to what you were saying about women's MMA and, and being coachable and, and how these two girls are doing a great job paying attention to their corners and all that. But also think about this. Look at the technique and the, the patience and just the, the basic will that these two girls are showing. This is amateur MMA. They're priming themselves for a very solid professional career. A good amateur fighter who wants to turn pro reaches this point. It's not the slappy bar style haymakers, I'm gonna knock you out, swing my arms as crazy as I can. I'm not bull rushing you with my head down, trying to tackle you. These girls are doing it the right way. They're setting up proper takedowns from wrestling, excellent jiu-jitsu position, and amazing kickboxing skills. These girls are definitely priming themselves to go to that next level. Yeah, the, the, the thing about it is they started on a sound foundation. They didn't develop any bad habits initially. They didn't do the barroom fighting where they relied on power or relied on a couple of things that they had that they were gifted with and therefore developed sort of a leaning on type of attitude where you just lean on that you don't learn anything new. They've got the foundation. The fundamentals are there and they're applying them. And these girls could beat a woman who outweighs them by 80 pounds who had no technique because the technique in there looks really good. It's awesome. And you see a good shot of her own here. She's got the guard. She's on the bottom trying to have an active guard to work a sweep or submission setup. Owens is doing an awesome job keeping tight, protecting herself. And since you're not allowed to strike to the head when you're on the ground, Verone's taking those shots on the bottom to elbow and punch the legs. And she can break down those the leg muscles as just like a, a tie kick if they were standing up. Continue to beat the legs down, it would be there. She went for a submission there, tried for a triangle. Look at Delaney Owens staying super tight, pressuring around the side control. Awesome patience and really, really good technical maneuvering to get the side control and pass the guard. Right up to mount, too. Beautiful transition. And then look at Verone escaping right away with Owens staying to try to take the back and keep the hooks in. Beautiful jiu-jitsu for amateur MMA. When we come back, it's the final round. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tampa, Florida, everybody. Jay Adams alongside Ben Glossop, Battle of Tampa. You were just looking at Delaney Owens, who had a big smile on her face. I think she knows she's piled up a good lead here, and all she has to do is have a nice, strong round three, and she should remain undefeated as an amateur fighter. I completely agree. If she doesn't get submitted or does not get knocked out, she's definitely going to win this fight. It's, it's do or die time for Verone. She needs to step up. She needs to stop being so defensive. She's showing great stamina. She's showing great patience in the fight. But now she's got to turn the corner. She's got to get aggressive and she's got to get powerful. 
And right now she's working to sink in a really nice uh, headlock, a nice guillotine. I said headlock because it wasn't quite deep enough to be considered a guillotine to force the choke. There's a big difference in controlling someone's head and working for the choke itself. And again, Owens, where she's been the aggressor, is also very patient when the attacks are getting put on her. Yeah, this is where it's do or die, as you said. This is where you see what types of adjustments your corner gave you in between rounds. Probably the advice in Owens' corner was do more of the same. Don't do anything stupid. Don't leave anything hanging out there. You know, don't get caught. You know, everybody can get caught. It's, it's, that's the nature of the sport, so be conservative. And, you know, go at about 90%. Obviously, stay do exactly what she's doing here. Good, aggressive grappling, but don't do anything stupid. That pass to the mountain by Owens was textbook, and now she's got a mounted triangle set up, working for an arm bar also. And there's that dexterity, that crazy flexibility that Verone has. It's allowing her to bend almost. If there's a Mr. Fantastic, she might be Mrs. Fantastic. <laughs> because I tell you what, she is able to maneuver out of some of these submission setups just out of that shoulder and lower torso flexibility that a lot of people just don't have. Yeah, and for the older guys out there like me, I'm going to go with Stretch on Fantastic Four. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but she is so flexible, Ben. I mean, so many times she's gotten out of the submissions. The arm bars alone, two or three of them she got out of, they look like she should have been finished off. I truly think that if Owens would have set up some of these submissions against just other, you know, um, regular opponents, should I say, Owens is going to have the opportunity to just finish these fights. But Verone, I love that she's patient and calm, but she's got to get in here. Owens is working a, an Eddie Bravo rubber guard here real quick, trying to set up a nice omoplata, but there's the quick step over. Verone is always aware of where she is. Win or lose this fight, her defensive capabilities say a lot about her. She's going to have a huge career, but she needs to do more than this over under seatbelt positioning to win this fight. Yeah, the big difference is she's surviving, and she's not. she doesn't have a lead. She can't, she's got to finish off this submission if she can because she does not have a lead. Boy, she's really trying to torque the neck now. She's really cranking back on her foot, trying to put some pressure on Owen's neck. Is Owen's in any trouble here? I, I don't think that from the angle, there's just not a lot. I mean, she's not really, it doesn't look like she's trying very hard to struggle. She, Delaney Owens is taking her time. She's saying, hey, you've got a good position on me, but you're not choking me. I'm in no threat. Here, the buzzer's about to go off, and guess what? I was able to wait it out. Here's the decision. <laughs> We could listen to you guys, listen to your coaches every move. You were working with an extreme escape artist with that match, but you kept control, you kept your aggression. What was going through your minds? Uh, really, I just wanted to submit her, but it didn't happen. So, but she was a really good fighter and really tough and wiry, for sure. So, I was happy. This is Craig the Pitbull Pittman, a former wrestler with WCW, watching Jay's Brawl Call. Hurrah! More MMA action coming right up. Hey, we're now joined by Valerie Thompson of Teeny B. You've seen her interviewing the fighters. Very easy on the eyes. And she's going to talk about some other gals who are very easy on the eyes. Some of our ring card girls here tonight, Val, they are absolutely stunning. And you brought the bikinis in. Tell us all about this latest style. Well, this lovely woman here is Bree. She's wearing Teeny B swimwear. This is actually from their Oasis line. She's wearing the scoop top and the shorty bottoms. I absolutely love these suits. Their slogan, less fabric, more looks. It's amazing. You got that right. The biggest problem is I'm having trouble uh, keeping Ben Glossop uh, to focus on the fights. There's you. Fights here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have our next model. What's her name and what style bikini is this? This is Marilyn. Again, she's wearing the Oasis. I absolutely love this color. It's one of my top favorites. This one in their true blue. You can see all these bikinis at teenybee.com. Ben, are you still here? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back to the fights. <laughs> This is Kevin Randleman, and you're watching Jay's Brawl Call. Hoorah! Alrighty, our next fight in the featherweight division. You are looking at Jose Quinones in the white trunks versus Benjamin Corso in the red trunks. Corso, obviously, with a big height advantage over Quinones. Both of these guys love to do striking. Um, going to see a really, really good clinching matchup from these guys, I think. Actually, for amateur fighting, this is some amazing 
experience coming in. You think a lot of times, Jay, that when you see two amateur guys they've never fought before, but you're looking at a combined total of just under 10 fights. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, Quinones at three and four, Benjamin Corso at two and one. I think uh, Corso probably uh, close to six feet tall. Quinones at five, six. We'll see if that height advantage uh, comes into track. They're loving the trade so far. Yeah, they're loving the trade. Corso is showing some, almost a little bit too relaxed, keeping his hands way down, but his head movement is signature of somebody that's been boxing for a really long time. Yeah, those hands are low, boy. And I tell you, Quinones looks strong. You've got to be careful coming in with your hands down low on Quinones. Nice little flick of the, the wrist there, not trying to necessarily do damage on some of those punches, but just test distance and test reaction times. Allows you to see if you're going to set up your kicks or whatever. But there's that loose cover-up. Quinones is tracking him down, stalking him. Corso is saying, hey, man, feeling good, hands low. Let's shake and bake a little bit. Corso clearly feels confident in his boxing abilities coming in with his hands down that low. He does have good head movement, but it doesn't matter. You need to get those hands up. Even his reaction time, though, he's, he's showing great parrying techniques. He's got great rhino cover-up techniques. Quinones is just throwing straight bombs down the pipe trying to connect, but he's just missing because of Corso's great head work. Jose Quinones, usually at 155, coming down here for this featherweight matchup. Won his last couple of fights against Peyton Tresgrove and Cameron Dixon. Got a K over Dixon, and I want a split decision over Tresgrove. We haven't seen a little bit of Greco-Roman clinching in the very beginning, but this is a straight-up kickboxing match. You wouldn't know from the MMA but <laughs> that it's an MMA fight. Wondering uh, for you guys at home, why are they just kickboxing? Is it because of the shin guards? Let's just explain some of the rules really quick. In amateur MMA in Florida, fighters have to wear heavier gloves than a normal professional fight, usually seven ounces. Pro fighters wear four, and it's mandatory that they wear shin guards to help you know, fighters can still instill their damage, but it's a good protection technique on both sides as these guys are gaining experience, trying to follow their dream to the pro ranks. And you'll see that the shin guards aren't your typical kickboxing shin guards. They're actually very thin. They're solid and hard material for you to be able to kick well, perform well as we come to the end of round one. And welcome back, everybody. Time for round two, Battle of Tampa. Jay Adams alongside Ben Glossop and Ben you were talking about the AMI rules here when we left off. One of the other things I like about Florida, they don't require the head guard. Uh, and, and that allows you to see the fighter's face. It makes it much better as a TV guy. I'd much rather watch the fighters without the head guards. Well, absolutely. You get to see their expression. You get to see some of the action the way an MMA fan wants to see a true MMA. But where they also protect in that area is when the fighters are on the ground in amateur mixed martial arts, they're not at all allowed to strike to the head. So it's all body contact, punches, knees, elbows. You can strike the body, but you're not allowed to do any striking to the head when you're on the ground. That allows for a good, clean kickboxing match on the feet and not a necessity for a headgear. Like you said, I agree with you 100% from the seats we're sitting in. It's a whole lot more fun to watch. So I'm sure people at home or this amazing crowd in the background, they're loving not having headgear as well. Corso lost his last fight against Yvonne Agnard. And that was Battle of Tampa Bay back in March of 13. And uh, won his first fight against David Boy. The oh, down he goes. Down he goes. Quinones is on the canvas. I don't think he's getting up, Ben. Let's tell you, let's see what the, this great referee and awesome friend of ours, Ross Kellen. Big shout out to our good friend. Uh, what he's going to do here. I mean, Quinones is down. It's over. But if he were to stood back up, we have a standing eight count for Florida. We're the only state in amateur MMA that has a standing eight count. But no need for a standing eight count if you're not standing back up. That was beautiful on Corso's part. Well, you know, Benjamin Corso clearly came into this fight very confident of his stand-up game, has great hands. You were mentioning early on that it looks like he has a heavy boxing background. He was so confident, in fact, that he came in on the bigger Quinones with his hands down. That is either the mark of someone who doesn't know what they're doing or someone who is very confident in his hand speed. Clearly, he was confident in his hand speed, and he did catch Quinones. He goes to 2-1 and one on his career. Nicely done as an amateur. Absolutely. 
picked this target apart, showed great head movement. It was executed almost perfectly. And it looks like Quinones is getting up. Just uh, precautionary measures to check him out. His heart and his pride are broken more than anything else, but he will fight another day, that's for sure. Yeah, you can see the damage to his nose and, and that earlier shot. You can see the damage to the left side of his temple. It was definitely starting to swell up. They'll probably get some end swell on that pretty quickly because he was clipped. <laughs> All right, Ben, that was an exciting fight. You guys stayed on your feet the whole time. Was that your original strategy? Yes, of course. I always want to keep it banging. You had a smile on your face a lot of the match, I noticed. Is that a part of the psych that you do? Call, call me weird, but I like getting hit. So, I mean, I just have a good time. <laughs> if I can hit somebody and they can hit me, I'm in. We definitely saw you smiling. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoyed this very special presentation of Jay's Brawl Call. 12 amateur fights that did not disappoint. The Battle of Tampa. We're definitely going to have to check them out next time. Great job refing right over there, Ross Kellen. We remember Ross from the RFC days. All right, we'll see you next time. Going for it. His eyes are bulging. He's bleeding from the head. And he gets it at 700. Are you kidding me?